Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I want to commend you, Mr. Chairman, on conducting a remarkable set of hearings last week. Uh, and I want to commend every member of this committee uh, for the result approving Judge Barrett's nomination, moving it to the floor where I have every confidence she will be confirmed on Monday. Uh, this is a major victory for the American people. This is, in many ways, the single most important accomplishment President Trump has achieved in office. In nominating a principled constitutionalist to the Supreme Court, President Trump was honoring the promises he made to the American people. And in confirming that principled constitutionalist to the court, the Republican majority in this Senate will likewise be honoring the promises that we made to the American people. I want to take a moment to highlight something that we've learned in the last two weeks, which is that the, the, the Democrats understand that their radical agenda for the Supreme Court is profoundly unpopular. The Democrats are unwilling to defend their radical agenda for the Supreme Court. That's illustrated powerfully today by the fact that every Democratic chair is empty, that they are boycotting this markup. They're boycotting this markup because their substantive arguments are not persuasive. They're not effective. Last week during the hearing, it was striking. Not a single Democrat asked any questions that defended the far left's view of religious liberty, which is that the Supreme Court should go through the public square, scour the public square to remove any reference to God Almighty. Not a single Democrat defended the far left's radical view of religious liberty that the government has the power to punish you for living out your faith. I noticed these lovely photographs in the place where our Democratic colleagues normally would be. You know, one photograph I don't see is a photograph of the Little Sisters of the Poor. Little Sisters of the Poor, a Catholic convent of nuns who've taken a vow of poverty who the Obama administration persecuted because they were living according to their religious faith. And who Joe Biden pledges to once again persecute if he is elected. Not a single Democrat in this committee defended that radical view of religious liberty because the American people don't want it. They want a court that will actually protect our religious liberty, not take it away. Not a single Democrat during the hearing last week defended the Democrats' radical view of free speech, which is that the federal government has the authority to regulate political speech, to regulate your free speech, and to silence you if you dare criticize a politician. That is a terrifying increase in government power. There have been four votes on the left for that proposition, that the federal government has the power to ban movies, that the federal government has the power to ban books. That was the position of the four dissenters in Citizens United, and not a single Democrat would defend that radical proposition because the American people have no interest in a federal government that has the power to regulate free speech. On the Second Amendment, not a single Democrat defended the proposition that four dissenters in Heller versus District of Columbia maintained, which is that the Second Amendment protects no individual right to keep and bear arms whatsoever, which means that government can make it a crime, a felony for any American to own a firearm, and there's nothing you can do to challenge it in court. There are four votes for that, one vote away. Not a one of them defends that radical proposition. And so I would say to all of us in the majority, we should take solace from this. They know 
The propositions they're advancing are radical. They are extreme. They're not what the American people want. To all of the grassroots activists who are out there fighting right now, less than two weeks away from Election Day, fighting to defend the Constitution and Bill of Rights, take solace in the fact that our absent Democrats understand last week was not going well for them. They tried to ask a few questions of Judge Barrett, and they realized this ain't good. The American people seeing this smart, calm, talented, principled jurist pledging to defend the Constitution, that is a problem for us, the Democrats. And by day two of the questioning, they had gotten out of Dodge. By, by midway, midday, there were only two Democrats even left in the hearing room. Now, of course, two Democrats is more than we have here today. So it went from barely being present to being totally absent. There's a reason why Joe Biden and Kamala Harris refused to answer the question whether they intend to pack the court, because the answer is yes. If they get power, they will move to pack the court to expand the number of justices to fill it with partisans, an abuse of power that would do immense damage to the independence of the judiciary. And why won't they answer the question? Because they know it is profoundly unpopular. They know the American people don't want to see the court politicized, its independence destroyed, which is what today's Senate Democrats are pushing. The stakes of this confirmation and the stakes of this election coming up in two weeks are enormous. The reason the Democrats want to see leftists on the court is so that a majority of judges, unelected lawyers in robes can mandate policy outcomes that the American people don't want, that they would never vote for, without our colleagues having to take responsibility for it. There are times when it seems Republican senators don't necessarily understand that the principles we're fighting for, the overwhelming majority of the American people are with us. But you know who understands that very well? The Senate Democrats who refuse to attend today. Congratulations, Mr. Chairman.